Did you ever wonder how you could crank up the speed of your cheap Prusa China clone by three to four times? Or do you want to get more consistent, higher quality prints at faster printing speeds? When I discovered under extrusion in my last bigger print on my Illigu Neptune 2, I decided to analyze the problem and to solve it. I got some really surprising results. If you want to know what I found and how you can increase your printer speed and quality for just a few bucks, then keep watching. I'm Tom and you're watching 3D Printing Geek. My last print didn't come out as expected. There's some under extrusion. The reason is that there's a lot of friction between the filament spool and the spool holder. Because of this, the extruder lacks force to push the filament through the PTFE tube and nozzle, causing missteps, especially when longer continuous extrusions occur. Before applying any modifications, I check the e-steps of my printer and the amount of filament it's capable to extrude in its stock configuration so that I have a baseline which I can compare with my results later on. For each step of which I think that it will improve the extrusion, I decided to use the flow test tool developed by Stefan from CNC Kitchen. To do the flow test, I downloaded the flow test tool and opened the flow test tool XLSM, allowed the macros to be executed and changed the given values to meet my printers and filament specifications on the first spreadsheet. Then I let the tool generate the G-code, which I then copied from the second sheet, put it into a file to send it to the printer. This is what it looks like. The printing temperature decreases by 5 degrees Celsius in each column from left to right, starting from 220 degrees Celsius to 205 degrees Celsius. The rows represent the flow rate increasing from top to bottom by 2 cubic millimeter per second, starting with 4 cubic millimeter per second and going up to 16 cubic millimeter per second. By looking at the blobs, it's visible that the extrusion is getting into some trouble at lower temperatures and higher flow rates. For comparable results, I fill out the third tab of the flow test tool. This is done by taking the weight of each blob using a precision scale and note the result in the corresponding cell. As a result, we get two diagrams. The first one shows the real flow and compares the requested flow with the real flow in cubic millimeter per second. That is, the amount of filament that was really extruded through the hot end. The second one shows the amount of under extrusion. But first, let's discuss the real flow. The diagram shows the result of the baseline test for the temperatures from 205 degrees Celsius to 220 degrees Celsius. For a requested flow of 4 to 6 cubic millimeter per second, the real extruded amount of filament is met for all four temperatures. From 8 cubic millimeter per second, the lowest three temperatures get into under extrusion because the extruder begins to skip steps and grind on the filament. Only with 220 degrees Celsius, it's possible to get up to almost 10 cubic millimeter per second. The ditch in the orange line comes from a measurement error or maybe dirt in the extrusion path. The second diagram shows the amount of under extrusion for the different temperatures used. It's clearly visible that printing at 205 degrees Celsius, which is common for PLA slicer profiles, there's no problem printing at 4 cubic millimeter per second. And with a slight amount of about 5% under extrusion, 6 cubic millimeter per second might still work. Now it's time to start solving all mentioned problems one by one. To solve the spool holder problem, I printed this one, which I found on Thingiverse. Unmount the old spool holder, put the bolt into the opening and fasten it with a nut. And finally slide the spool holder in place. It's time to do the first test with a new spool holder and compare the results with the ones we got in the baseline. Comparing the results for the real flow with the results without the new spool holder shows that the effect becomes visible from 10 cubic millimeter per second. It's also visible in the diagram for under extrusion where the effect gets bigger with higher flow rates. Isn't that already nice for just exchanging the spool holder with a better one? which you can print yourself for maybe less than $5. Next, let's exchange the stock extruder with an extruder similar to the one Elegio uses with the Neptune 2S. I got mine for about 16 bucks. Look for a quality, troncy or similar double-geared extruder. When installing the new extruder, the filament path isn't in line with the filament sensor anymore. The new extruder's filament path is approximately 6 mm higher than the old extruder's filament path. Let's fix it by mounting a spacer plate beneath the filament run-out sensor 
which will additionally work as a filament guide that ensures that the filament is fitted more straight and at the correct height into the filament runout sensor and the extruder. Here are the results of the flow test tool after exchanging the stock extruder. At 250 degrees Celsius, the extrusion rate has doubled from 6 cubic meter per second to 12 cubic millimeter per second, showing almost no under extrusion. Here's the diagram for 215 degrees Celsius, where the extrusion rate nearly reaches 14 cubic millimeter per second. The under extrusion diagram shows a remarkable thing at 8 cubic millimeter, where we seem to get over extrusion. Compared to the 215 degree Celsius diagrams, there's no big change for 220 degree Celsius, and it even shows the over extrusion effect. Both changes together massively decrease the force on the extruder needs to pull the filament in so that the force is now free to push it through the PTFE tube. It helped a little to decrease the print speed and to increase the hot end temperature, but that's not a solution I want to stay with. The PTFE tube used is fine as long as you only print PLA, but degrades when printing materials that require higher temperatures like PETG, nylon or ABS. Not to talk about the unhealthy fumes PTFE disposes at higher temperatures. Now the PTFE tube gets replaced with a Capricorn tube. You can get them as XS or TL, both should perform equally. The only difference is that the TL is translucent, making it easier to spot where the filament is in the tube. Whereas the XS series is said to be more suitable to print flexible filaments, since I only have the XS variant in use, I can't tell if there's really a difference between both of them. I really didn't expect too much from changing the tube, but surprisingly the diagrams show that even at 250 degrees Celsius there's a measurable effect which even gets bigger when printing at 220 degrees Celsius. I also did a test with 227.5 and 230 degrees Celsius, which brings up the extrusion flow almost up to 18.5 cubic millimeter per second. That is nearly 3.5 times the flow I had with the stock configuration of my printer. Before doing some test prints, I calculated the maximum possible print speed from the flow values I found. This is done very easy by dividing the maximum flow by the product of the layer height and the line width, in my case 18.5 cubic millimeter per second, divided by 0.2 millimeter times 0.4 millimeter, and get a maximum speed of 231 millimeter per second, or about 4.5 times faster than my usual speed of 50 millimeter per second. To prove the findings, I first printed a simple wrench model with my standard profile at 50 millimeter per second. It looks almost perfect with a smooth top and bottom and nice layers. The reason I chose the model is because it has some long extrusion paths where the printhead can reach its maximum speed. A benchy wouldn't benefit that much from increasing the speed because it has very many short moves where the printhead doesn't reach these high speeds. For the second print, I reduced the speed so that the print was done four times faster than with a standard profile. Then the same print was done with settings resulting in 3.5 and three times the speed. The four times print started looking good in the beginning, but as you can see here, it failed closing the top. At 3.5, the holes in the top are nearly gone. Using more top layers would fill the gaps, but increase the print time again. Three times faster than my usual speed seems to be the sweet spot to aim for. No more gaps in the top and the overall print quality is not far from the slow printed part. I'm really very satisfied with the results I get now, though I prefer to print moderately faster than before and enjoy a higher print quality instead. Although it's good to know I can print faster, for example when prototyping where accuracy and a nice finish are not so important. Don't forget to boop the like button and subscribe the channel. See you next time.